Hey, what's up? I'm Chris from Save Today. You're watching Project 3. I drop down onto my knees. The sun is hanging low through the leaves. I know my love, I drove you away. I'm dying, trying to change. Oh, it's great, man. We love to tour. It's, uh, it's something that is sort of, um, unnatural for a lot of people because you know you're away from your family and you're in a different city every day but when you really love touring it's a blast and all of us really like to tour and um, you know we enjoy being around each other which helps too so like being back on tour is always fun it's not as if uh, it's something we dread. Right. You know, we actually enjoy it. We enjoy being around each other. We enjoy rehearsing. Like, just playing music together is fun. So, uh, it's great to be back out on the road again. I don't. I okay. don't read the reviews because I'm really sensitive. Okay. So I'll just get, like, um, upset about what people are saying if it's not, like, 100% glowing. And it never is. Of course, not everybody's going to be happy, you know, so... I just stay away because I decided that if I really like it, if I'm happy with it, that's good enough for me. But I know a lot of musicians, they are really desperate to please the masses. So you kind of have to have your finger on the pulse. You know what? I became a father. Okay. And it wasn't like um, overnight that I realized like I just don't want to be a cynical, angry dad. But over time, you know, as I get to experience this beautiful miracle of life every day, you know, I realize like, wow, I'm I'm not very happy with the world, but I don't want to be such an angry person that I'm a bad example right. for my family, and it just didn't feel good. You know, if you're like really angry about society or the way that uh, humanity treats itself, it could be uncomfortable, I mean, to a point where you're... You're so angry that you get you get irritable with your friends and family. Right, everyone around you. And so, I think that um, for me, the turning point was becoming a dad and just realizing that like life is a beautiful, wonderful, miraculous creation. And of course, it's not a perfect world, but at least I don't want to be rejecting life. I don't want to reject things as they are. I want to learn how to live with it so that I can teach my daughter how to learn to live with the world instead of opposed to the world and fighting against things. And she'll have her own life, you know. It's, it's not like as parents we can change the course of her life, but whenever it's in our control, we want to be aware of our own perspective and outlook. Now, was it a relief to have a record that wasn't, you know, like the past two lyrically for you? Yeah, you know what? I mean, I really needed it in my life. Like, I needed to feel better. I needed to, like, grow and change and not be... Uh, not be opposed to life anymore. And so, I mean, it was a relief for me as a person just to get through some of that. You know, to come to a place where I can accept the world and it's not as if it's a it's some sort of you know happy Hollywood no. ending it's just that um, whereas before I was really uh, cynical and frustrated now I feel uh, like my heart is open and I just care about people and I think it was the same reaction when you're angry you're just saying I don't like things as they are and underneath that, it might be something that's really more actually sort of concerned or caring about the state of things. Right. So that's what I found underneath the surface. So it's a relief for me as a person, 
you know, to be at this place in my life where I'm not angry, I just care. And it's also a relief to finally have Daybreak released. Yes. People can hear it, and they know what the trilogy was all about. And so the the, the follow-up to In Reverie is now finished. So that is a tremendous relief. What's next, another trilogy? Or? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think <laughs> probably just uh, continue to write songs. Right. And uh, I'm sure the... The music will continue to evolve, as it always does, and um, the lyrics will continue to be introspective, but I don't think I'll go on such a deep journey, Right. because I did all the work, I feel better, I'm comfortable in my own skin, and that was the mission. I was listening to, um, there was one day I was in the studio all by myself, and I was, I was listening to this guy, Fela Kuti, who's like an, he's like an Afro-Cuban artist. Okay. He's like one of the most famous performers in the history of Africa. Okay. At least in modern history. And, uh, there was this song that was like 33 minutes long. And it had a really interesting groove. I just liked how it sounded. So I put it on my iPod, you know, and I went in and started playing drums along to the song. Just for fun. I had nothing to do. I was listening to Fela Kuti and I just said, okay, I'm gonna go play drums. And I just stumbled into this sort of uh, rhythm that was interesting to me. So I went and turned on the Pro Tools and started recording and I recorded the little drum part. And then I went into the control room and I was just listening to the drum idea. And then uh, the, the guitar part evolved out of the drum idea. Okay. I was just listening to it over and over again. I started to hear this little melody in my head and I got the guitar and tried to figure out what it was doing. I uh, realized that it was singing this strange sort of like Middle Eastern melody. And I thought, well, that's really cool. And I didn't know what to do with it, you know, I just put it on a hard drive. It was a drum part and, a, and the two guitar parts. Because the guitar part's actually harmonized guitar. It's not one guitar, it's two. Okay. Playing separate things. And I just sort of uh, recorded the guitar part and drum part and just set it aside. And then months later, I was uh, thinking about Daybreak and I thought, hey, that song would be really cool right in the middle of Daybreak. It's, it's very strange, and it can be sort of a surreal departure from the rest of the album. And uh, I put the song together, and then when I finally showed it to Arun, he had a great idea of slowing the whole thing down. Because originally the song was a lot faster. Oh god. Like the drum groove that I originally came up with was quite a bit faster, and so I wrote to that. But when Arun heard it, he thought, hey, this would sound really haunted if we just slowed it way down. So that's why it has that sort of sick, creepy, haunted feeling. Because he had the idea of slowing that whole thing down. And the chorus is still uplifting and Yeah, very, exactly. Yeah, with the melodrama. Yeah. Nice. Everything's so, different. Like, on this album, we decided to treat every song as if it was its own album. You know, so we recorded the first song. And then when we went to the second song, we decided to do a completely different setup. So it's different drums, different bass amp, different guitar amps. And one of the most interesting things we did on this album was in the song Daybreak, the really long song, we produced each section differently. So it's a different drum kit from the first section to the second section to the third section for the rest of the song. Every single part of the song has a different uh, production. So it's kind of interesting, um, and that was fun for us, just uh, as musicians, to try to explore different sounds. Play around. I, and I, I definitely credit Arun and Rodrigo with a lot of that, because they, uh, they have a sort of innate sense of how to approach songs from the back end, like how to have the right tones and the right uh, drum parts and bass parts. So. It was fun to show the songs to those guys and let them run with it.
Right. Now you worked with Mark Hudson? Yeah. Now was he in the studio with you guys the whole time or was it kind of... He was. He was in the studio the entire time. Okay. Yeah. And he was uh, the co-producer and engineer and he mixed the album wow. and mastered the album. So Mark Hudson did everything we couldn't do essentially. He's the fifth member of He's, he's definitely the fifth member. Yeah. yeah. Easily. I didn't even think about what I was going to do after high school. I was just sort of a regular kid and I liked music and we just happened to make an album and people started to listen to it. You know, and if it weren't for the success, early success of Cancel It Down, right. we just wouldn't have continued making music. It was only that people wanted to continue hearing us that we got to keep doing it. So I think, uh, you know, at the time, I was just nearsighted, you know? Right? Farsighted? Far farsighted. Farsighted, yeah. I was farsighted. I could only see what was right around me. I just didn't think about it, you know? And it wasn't until years and years later that I realized, wait, like, I'm in this band and people like our band and we're influential and it's sort of surreal. It just didn't occur to me at the time. So, uh... I feel like, uh, like at least looking back on it, I realized that um, I loved music so much that I wasn't going to give up on it. So I never even bothered to think about what else I was supposed to do. Right. I was so driven that it was only about music. Is that why 14 years later, after multiple lineup changes, yeah. labels, music industry in general, you're still still doing still it? Here. I just, I just love music. I can't stop. And you know, like we always had lineup changes. When we made our first demo, right. we had a different group. And when, when we made our first album, when, when we made our second album, it was a different group than the first album. And so it's just always been a revolving door. But I feel like I finally have a band that's gonna stick with me. Right. Nobody has their, their sights set on bigger things. <laughs> so I think I can, continue with this lineup for the rest of the band's history. In another 14 years, hopefully. Cross my fingers if I have that long to live. Heck I mean, yeah, I'm doing The it. shows are getting bigger yeah. as the band's going up. Two for nights sure. at the trough. Yeah, man. It's great. You know, I moved out of Jersey because my wife grew up in California. Oh, God. And uh, I went to visit and I just fell in love with the place. It's like a little farming town, college town, it's out in the middle of nowhere. I grew up in a farming community in New Jersey, so I relate to the, the folks. Yes. I just love it out there. It's great. Better weather, we understand. Better weather. I miss my family. I miss my friends, but... Uh, when you come back to Jersey for a show, it's like a homecoming. I travel so much that I don't, you know, it's not like I'm away from everybody for the whole year. Do you know that I love you? I can't stand living without you But I don't